Have you ever dreamed of being your own boss? Well, that's exactly why I started building my very own CNC plasma cutter. I'm Thio, and in my previous videos, we've seen how I hustled, saved, and even sold some outsourced products in order to fund this project. Just a few weeks ago, I completed the frame and all the mechanical motions. Today, I'm excited to say we are nearly 90% done from mounting the stepper motors to creating a brand new electrical control cabinet. While it hasn't been easy, this uncharted venture will hopefully blossom into a thriving business in the near future. So let's rewind and catch up on what I've been up to lately. After I had the frame complete, I gathered a few skateboard bearings and washers to use as an idler pulley. This assembly worked, but I needed to drill and cap a few holes to fasten everything together. Which was easier said than done. Freaking emulator. These taps suck. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Dude, I'm telling you, the freaking tools you get from the big box stores, they suck. Jesus Christ. How did I know that was gonna happen? Piece of crap. Piece of literal crap. Okay, I got five sixteenth hole drilling taps. You saw me break one of the taps off, and then I re-tapped the hole very carefully. That's annoying when you don't have the right tools for the job. For those of you that haven't seen the last video, I'm taking JD Garage's CNC plasma plans and basically giving it a makeover. I'm using a lot of their design components, but making the overall machine much larger. This is the X-axis motor mounting plate. In addition to mounting the motor, I have to thread in a few idler pulleys that essentially tension the belt around the timing pulley. This custom made bearing block will act as a carriage for both the torch and the X-axis motor. It will run along a 2x2x16 gauge square tube gantry on a set of small roller skate bearings. Next up, I'm center punching, drilling, and tapping a few holes for the belt tensioners. But you'll never guess what happened. And no, it didn't break. You gotta be kidding me. The threads on the tap just completely rolled over. Like what the actual ball sack. Once I had the holes drilled and tapped in the gantry, I was able to install the 3D printed belt tensioners. I must say, I was actually quite surprised at how well these belts performed. So I got the X-axis mounted with the belts and everything, and it looks like it'll work pretty good. It's a little stiff right now. I'm wondering if that's just because I have the, the belts too tight, but I think it'll work fine. Next thing I have to do is decide on how I want to mount the Y-axis motors. JD's Garage, they have you just drill and tap into the three printed uh, bearing blocks. I don't think I want to do that just for longevity purposes. Plus, if I do that, I can't access these adjustment screws, so I might just cut it here. But first, gotta go to Menards again. Get a bunch of taps, because I know I'm gonna break some more. Okay, so I took a break from the mechanical work outside and I have now started all of the electrical. Here's a general layout of the panel. Probably could have did a better job of trying to save some space. That was like, I don't know, 100 bucks, 120 bucks or something like that. Hey, get out of there, come on. Power supplies, some terminal blocks here to distribute power coming in to both of these. The smaller power supply is gonna be running the, uh, the driver for the X axis, and then the larger one's gonna dri be driving the two Y axis motors. Eventually, I'm probably gonna add another driver for the Z axis. Probably be able to run it off that smaller one. We got the Arduino Uno R3 with the DIN rail mount. Yes, sir. Some more terminal blocks for driver wires and probably some limit switches. JD's de garage doesn't include any limit switches, but I'm gonna try to put some in. Grounding terminal blocks. I'm gonna need to get a few more of those. And then I'm also gonna need to get a panel mount switch for on off. I was struggling with the editing side of this part because the electrical is just a lot of tedious, repetitive, boring work. And let's be honest, everyone only really wants the schematics anyways, which I don't have. So you'll just have to subscribe to find out. Show you guys the technique I'm using here. I bought these cool little wire barrels, like a crimp on connection, instead of just putting 
the bare wire in there and you slip these over the top of the wire, it stops. And then I have this little crimping tool. He does, boom, it has a nice connection. Okay, I am attempting to make the wire connectors. The only problem with this is I, for the life of me, could not solder this. This one I just got, so maybe I'm getting a little better, but this is proving to be quite the time consuming process. But it's Sunday morning, so I haven't got nothing to do. I've done this before and it's still difficult. I can't imagine somebody wanting to do this for the first time, having to learn all of this. Hot. Okay, got everything moved back outside. This is what I did for the soldering. Honestly, I don't know how to feel about it. This one was kind of difficult because the the um, like the pads that I had to solder to are really thick. And then I went ahead and did one of the male ends, which, oh, I already cut that off, is over here. And that went much smoother because the pads were really thin material. So the solder, I barely had to heat it up and the solder stuck to it. I'm gonna try to hook up the X motor and give it a test run. I got everything downloaded. The Arduino's all hooked up, the power's, right now I only have the small power supply hooked up. I'm waiting on an on-off switch and um, a computer power cable. I'm gonna go ahead and try to solder those wires together and give it a run. Oh, I forgot to put on the connector, the actual metal piece that I eat. Damn it. Well, I guess I'm gonna have to resolder this anyways. Every time I try it, I fixed it. Black and green are one pole and red and blue are the other. Okay. Okay, I'll go get the laptop. Okay, so now I should be able to move this. Yes. And if I did X plus, the motor can move. Nothing. Okay, I just just meant to make sure all the wires are all reconnected and uh, we're gonna see what happens. Okay, I got the majority of the electrical done. I have a basically an on off switch with a computer monitor plug, the stepper motor drivers. So we have our Y1, Y2, X, and then eventually there'll be a Z here. And then this is the terminal block to just spread all of the signal wires and the supply power from the Arduino. Um, the relay here, I have yet to purchase my actual plasma cutter, so that's gonna have to wait. I just let it hang. Next step is mounting it in the cabinet. I will need to put it in there, bolt it down, and then drill out some holes for the stepper motor connectors and the these guys, whatever that is. Okay, so not sure exactly where I am in the timeline, but I hooked up the first Y motor, the X, and the belts for each one. I also mounted the Y motor mounting plate temporarily. I drilled and tapped into the plastic bearing blocks. I think I am going to just actually 
pop these out and tack them in place. I'm going through hole with a 1024 nut and I really don't need to have access the back if I'm gonna take the motor off. We'll just need to have an extension with uh, the right Allen head just to hold it in place while I tighten the nut up so I can actually access it from the front. Now you guys get to watch me do it to the other side. I started by drilling and tapping a few 1024 holes to mount the Y-axis belt tensioners. But as you saw, I had some backup this time. And man, does that tapping fluid make a world of difference. Next, you'll see uh, here coming up a quick glimpse of one of the belt tensioners. One just has two through holes and the other has slots that allows me to make some minor adjustments. Next, I'm setting up the stepper motor and mount exactly where I want it prior to cutting the excess length off and tacking the mounting flange. Once I had the flange cut the length, I ended up using my combination squares ruler to space the motor by about an eighth inch. I'm sure it would have been fine, but I just wasn't comfortable placing the stepper directly onto the Y-axis bearing block. Now, I gotta get that off. If I can get that off, then I'm good. If I can't, then I'm not good. Hold her steady. Pops out of there like that. Once the motor was free, I placed a few more securing tacks and was off to solder the final wiring harness. Okay, I got that connector wired up. It doesn't... I mean, I kind of have them color-coded, so the wire I got matches the wire that, the colors that come in the stepper motor, but it doesn't really matter. You just need to see which poles go together and then match those up on the, the actual driver. So right now I have the red and green poles connected, and to test that, you just go in there and if it has continuity, those poles go together. If it doesn't, you need to switch it until they do. If this is spinning the same direction... I had to confirm the two Y-axis motors were actually spinning in opposite directions because they're technically mirrored from each other. Okay, this involved y. just making sure they had the opposite poles hooked up and at the I driver. I think they are turning in opposite directions. So I just got lucky. So since these motors are mirrored, this one to go forward, it has to spin back towards the machine or counterclockwise. That means this one would have to also spin back towards the machine, but this time it's clockwise. So I'll show you what I mean. If I go backwards, this should go forward. Okay, installing the idler pulleys now. Same stack up as last time. Jesus. Perfect. Now, time for the belt. Now hopefully that should get rid of the racking. X is good, now I'm only through Y. That's pretty much it for this video. Got a small program running right now, just running it through its paces. Next video, which will probably be the last, I'm just gonna be buying my plasma cutter, trying to hook that up, getting the rest of the wires all tidied up, and then giving it a bunch of test runs. If there's anything that you'd like me to go more in detail in, let me know down in the comments. But otherwise, thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.